Hi guys, welcome back from the ad break. So we are still looking at some riders that have to do with triangles and quadrilaterals. So now we're going to focus mainly on quadrilaterals and try and apply those properties that we know about those quadrilaterals. So let's just go to the very first question that we need to look at. But first, we're going to look at some properties that we need to remind ourselves of. So, remember the terminology that we use for the special quadrilaterals is what we call opposite. When I'm saying opposite, we know if it's sides, then that side and that side are opposite, and that side and that side are opposite, right? Even these angles here are opposite. And let me use a different color for that one so that it's not a lot of things that don't make that much sense. And that one are opposite those two angles, and those two angles are also opposite, right? We also have what you call a diagonal, which is also the red parts that I have on my diagram, that and that. Lastly, we have a produced, which is very important, and I had already explained. If I say something is produced, I mean it is extended, right? That's where it is. You can see the extended part of LN. So LN will be produced to NM. That's how they would say it if they want you to use that particular concept. Then you can talk about an exterior angle of a shape, right, based on what shape that is. Now, if we have a parallelogram, just to remind ourselves of what a parallelogram is all about, we know that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, right? And we also know that they are not only parallel, they are also equal to each other. We know that both pairs of opposite angles are equal, and then the diagonals bisect each other. Remember, bisect will mean cut in half, right? This is to cut in half. Now, let's put this into a more needy way of doing it, right? What is all of this all about, this parallelogram? Let's try and see how can I now use this in a diagram. So they say L L -M -O -P, L -M -O -P, is a parallelogram. Now I need to immediately switch on my brain on what are the properties of a parallelogram, right? And then N is a point on MO such that LM is equals to LN. And then we are required to prove that, right? But for now, we don't want to focus much on the proving, right? Since this is a parallelogram, we know there's parallelness there, right? There's parallelness there. We know that there is equality here, and then there is equality there, right? But what we are told is that this is equal to this. So as a result, there's three lines. One, two, three that are equal, right? That might come in handy somewhere. But we will see whether we do need that or not. And then since this is equal to that, and we are told it means this angle here will be equal to that angle there, right? That's because of the fact that the... Um, the triangle will be an isosceles triangle, and then it will automatically be that one because of alternate angles. So now I have three angles that I have that are equal to each other. But also, just to add one more angle, that angle is also equal to the opposite angle, which is M, so I have four. Hmm. Now my list is going higher and higher. But let's see where how are we going to apply this, right? So we know that this is also a two-liner there because it is opposite the M, and then we also know that it is also equal to that. But what exactly do they want me to do? Hey, I've already proved what they want without even proving it. Hmm, this is nice. But anyways, let's write the mathematics of it, right? So we know that P is equal to M, and this will be uh, properties of a palm, properties of a palm, right? And then, actually, I want us to maybe say opposite angles of a palm, right? Instead of properties, because which property are you talking about? So let's rather use uh, opposite 
uh, angles of a palm, uh, opposite angles of a palm. But now I also know that the angle M is equal to angle N1. And this is because it's angles opposite equal sides, right? And then from there, I know that N1 is equal to L2, and my reason for this will be alternate angles because LP is parallel to MO. As a result, I know that P is equal to L2, right? And you know that L2 is this one here, NLP, right? And you don't need a reason for that, but you can always just say P is therefore equal to N, uh, NLP, not angle at N, right? You can always go back and write it the way the question wanted you to do it, which is NLP. But NLP is this angle here, NLP, which is just L2. Now, in the diagram, A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. All right, parallelogram, there's some interesting things. There's a lot of nice things about a parallelogram with these diagonals intersecting at E. So what does that tell me? It tells me that this will be equal to that, right? I know that. And then also the diagonals of a parallelogram, uh, D, E, C, F, intersect at G, right? They intersect at G, which is at that point. The diagonals of parallelogram, uh, F, G, A, A, C, H intersect at that. So now I have actually three parallelograms here, and I'm going to highlight them with different colors, right? So the first one will be this one here. The second one will be this one here. And then the third one will actually be, uh, let me, I, I'll use the same color maybe like this, right? It will be this one here. See, so now I have three parallelograms that I have. One that is a wobble, one that is just a red line, and one that is a blue line. So there's a lot of nice things that I can say in there, but what I just want to prove is to talk about DB being four times KC. Let's try and look at that. Right, so remember this is equals to that, this is equals to that, and we also know that, where's the other parallelogram? This one is equals to that, let's make it an X, and then this one is equals to that one there, right? We can do equality with a lot of things here, but for now, they don't really matter much, because we are going to use KC, right? So in color, Look at what KC is, right? KC is half of FC, right? So KC is half of FC. But also I know that FC is equals to DE, right? So therefore it means KC is equals to half of DE. But I know also that DE is equals to half of BD because it is a diagonal. So as a result, that will therefore mean that KC is equals to 1 over 2 into 1 over 2 BD. And then if I multiply them, I will get KC is equals to 1 over 4 BD, and then if I want to simplify this further in order to write it the way they want it, I will then have BD is equal to 4KC, and that's how I will then need to prove this, right? So please make sure you're always going to write your reason, right? The reason for FC being equal to um, DE will be opposite size of a palm, 
opposite sides of a palm. The reason why Kc is equal to that is because we just substituted, right? Even here, it will be a diagonals of a palm bisect. Diagonals of uh, diagonals of palm bisect. And then from there, you can always just always try to find reasons with the others. It's all about the properties of a palm. It's either because of the diagonals or because of the opposite sides of a palm. That's what I was trying to use here. So that's how you then will prove what they wanted us to prove. Really, guys, I hope this is making so much sense to you because I promise you, parallelograms are a very big part of your mathematics at this particular level in terms of your Euclidean geometry. So you need to make sure that you grasp every concept that is there. But for now, I want us to take a quick ad break. When we come back, we're going to look at some more quadrilaterals and try to prove some riders that have to do with them. Please stay tuned. I'll be back just now. Mm -hmm.